A look into a book with Balanagendran, an excavation for eternal bliss. Vandanam, Namaste, Namaskar, Good evening and welcome to a look into a book, an excavation for eternal bliss. You are listening to Radio Uran, a flight of life. Dear listeners, this is Bala Nagendran who want to show his heartfelt appreciations and thanks for the support you are showing to a look into a book. This week I have come with a treasure that's going to teach the life lesson that we haven't explored till date. Let's have a look into a book, an excavation for eternal bliss. Since we step up from the womb and since we got up from the birth bed, each and every one of us started living on the race called life. We have begun to have a tug of war between our own thoughts and what others think of ourselves and termed it as life. We haven't thought while we are having a birth, we have cried. And who is going to cry when we die? Our mindset has been framed to be a person of materialistic purpose rather than a person of lively purpose and to think of who will cry when we die. Our intuitions might not have asked this question in our subconscious mind. Who will cry when I die? If you have found who will cry when you die, you are a person of life. You are living and you have lived and you are going to live a life as a person, not as a machine or a mere cog of a machine called life. If you haven't explored, it is better late than never. I'm sure that tonight, after 10 o'clock, you will explore it. That is what the purpose of today's A Look Into A Book. Let's find out who will cry when you die. Robin Shilp Sharma or simply called as Robin S. Sharma is well known to most of the readers in the world. Having the ethnicity of Indian but living in Canada, Robin S. Sharma has contributed significantly in transforming an average person's life into a better one. Born in the year 1964, Robin S. Sharma graduated from the Dalhousie University of Law and later he has gone to work in Canada as a judicial clerk in the Toronto High Court and now he is a lawyer, a self-help motivational speaker an inspirational writer, more of all, one of the top 10 gurus of leadership international professionals. Robin S. Sharma has written 15 books 
till date. Some of them require special mentioning such as the monk who sold his Ferrari, discover your destiny with the monk who sold his Ferrari, leadership wisdom from the lessons of monk who sold his Ferrari, family wisdom from the lessons of monk who sold his Ferrari, who will cry when you die which we are going to explore today, mega living 30 days to a perfect life, the saint, the serf and the CEO, a perfect creation for heart desires and his final book till date released in the year 2011, the secret letters of the monk who sold his Ferrari. He has established Leadership International Consultancy in Toronto, Canada. He has been awarded for his fabulous contribution to the world in the year 2011 with an award called Golden Gavel or Golden Gavelry by the Toastmasters International. In the year 2012, he occupied the seventh spot in the list of leaders, international professional gurus. Let's see what Robin Sharma says in his creation. Who will cry when you die? The book has 101 chapters. Each chapter is comprising 3 to 5 pages but life lessons like an ocean little drops of water makes the mighty ocean is real in case of Robin Sharma's who will cry when you die we have chosen a specific chapters that we thought necessary to review therefore we request the listeners to read this book to the fullest in order to experience the ecstasy of having a thought process about who will cry when you die. Let's begin our journey towards jollity with an entertainment of a beautiful Bollywood track exclusively on Radio Dance. Stay tuned, we will come back and discover who will cry when you die. You are listening to Radio Dawn, a flight of life.
जोर से देखा तो कुछ दिखाई नहीं दे रहा था क्या बोला मैंने दूर से देखा तो कुछ दिखाई नहीं दे रहा था दूर से देखा तो कुछ दिखाई नहीं दे रहा था जब पास आके देखा तो कुछ था ही नहीं एक मंच जहाँ मिलती है महत्वपूर्ण जानकारिया एक मंच जहाँ होते हैं हंसी और ठहाके एक मंच जहाँ होती है चर्चाएं एक मंच जहाँ मिलेगा लोकप्रिय संगीत और इन सब के बीच एक ऐसा मंच जहाँ मिलता है सब कुछ लॉग ऑन कीजिए डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट रेडियो ऑन डॉट कॉम और जुट जाइए हमारे साथ लुक इन टू अ बुक विद बाला नागेंद्र An excavation for eternal bliss. Let's have the preface of "Who Will Cry When You Die" by the words of Robin S. Sharma. He begins by saying. I honor you all for picking up this book to read which itself reveals that you want to lead a, a more deliberate more joyful and a complete life you have decided to live a life by choice rather than by chance by design rather than by default for this I applaud you He reiterates that when I ride the monk who sold his Ferrari, I've never thought that I would reach to the core end of the people's mind. However, after riding the two series of my monk who sold his Ferrari, I have received countless letters from my readers who have. said how they have found their wisdom to lead a peaceful and prosperous life that letters moved me to do this the pages as you turn will surely help you to have a quality and to lead a proficient professional personal and spiritual life do send me an email meet me in my seminars whenever possible write to me i will give you a reply for sure with my personal note i wish you a deep joy a complete prosperity many happy days spent engaged in a worthy purpose robin s Sharma The first chapter begins title Discover your calling The author starts with a quote said by his father to him and he says I quote I will never forget what my father taught me with this quote It goes like this Son When you were born the world rejoiced while you were crying live life in such a way that when you die the world cries you rejoice this is not possible by simply living you have to discover your calling discovering your call is not 
that you need to leave the job that you're working in that you need to live sorry leave the ambition that you are focusing on or that you need to leave the path in which you are having a journey towards attaining your destiny but it is about looking into your inner self honor your calling by understanding what your mind says George Bernard Shaw was asked at his deathbed I quote what would you do if you have more life to live George Bernard Shaw reflected and replied with a deep sigh I quote I would lead a life that I want to be but I never was the author says the above thing shouldn't happen to anyone that is what the reason for this book you will find the necessary things that are required to discover your calling in your life's action for that you must question yourself what do you want to achieve how many people you are going to create while walking on this planet how many people will hear your life and your words what kind of a legacy that you will leave behind after you have taken your last breath what kind of a person do you want to be remembered by the world after your death and so on the author ends this chapter with a quote of a gandhi ji it goes like this i quote be the change that you wish to see in most in your world discover your calling live a peaceful life practice tough love is there anything called tough love and soft love the author says yes in chapter 4 the author says the most pleasurable thing in life is leading a self disciplined life or self disciplined actions of life he reiterates that I would like to term a self-disciplined life as tough love. The author says with a quote, I quote, The more tougher you are on yourself, the more easier the life will be. More tougher doesn't mean that hurting oneself. It means you must focus on what you need. at present live in the present with a self disciplined action he says a quote of an essayist and a thinker em gray it goes like this i quote successful people do things that most failures don't like to do the only difference between the successful people and the failure people or the failed people is successful people led a life with tough love that hasn't happened among the people who lost short of their goal successful people will discover what they essentially want they will be disciplined in their actions they will honor what they are doing they will believe in themselves of what they are doing the author ends this chapter with a quote of an aristotle quote of aristotle it goes like this a person becomes what he wants by exactly doing what he needs that is a person doing things by learning to become what he wants 
If you want to be a builder, you have to build. If you want to be a player, you have to play. If you want to be just a person of action, you have to just act. If you want to be a person of brave, you have to be brave. If you want to be a person of self-control, you have to be self-controlled. Control yourself. Self-discipline is the most pleasurable, tough love that successful people follow. Learn to say no gracefully. Have you said no to anyone who asks you to do things for them? And have you said or have you analyzed whether the no that you have said was grateful or not? Here author has given few tips in chapter 9. You must say no gracefully. The author goes by saying a Xuan Zhu, one of the Chinese, Chinese sage story. It goes like this, I quote. There was a man who was forging a sword for Maharaja. Even at the age of 90, this forging of swords has been precisioned and perfect in making. Even at the age of shivering age, he hasn't slipped in its work. Maharaja raised a question to the man. Is this a special talent of you or do you follow any special technology? The forging man replied with a sigh and smile that my majesty the simple answer would be my essential view is only on forging sword I won't look the metals that are known to be made other tools except swords in my life I have been forging swords from the age of 21 and I never looked any other thing except forging sword this is what the author is saying you must list out the essential things that you want successful people will do the things in which they are best or in which they feel that they are best you must increase and develop your area of excellence in that sense the author says a quote from his last book that is the leadership wisdom a lesson learned from the monk who sold his Ferrari it goes like this I quote if your priorities don't get scheduled in your planner other people's priority will get put in your planner would you like to prioritize your plans or would you like to be the prioritizer of other people's plans you must know how to say no gracefully to the people who are asking you to do the things in which you feel that you are not excellent saying no is not a bad thing but doing that without like is bad the author ends this chapter by saying that learn to say no if the thing is not comes under the area of your excellence you will feel the change and success in your life have you questioned when to keep silent have you questioned yourself to allow time for worry have you followed 21 days formula we are yet to explore all these elements after this fantabulous 
entertaining mind blowing song stay tuned to radio udan and have a flight of your life Bye. 